Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These guys to 11. So you guys have the new record coming on. The gang's all here in two weeks. So I how's know. that feel? It feels great, man. Like it's uh, it's been a long time coming, you know. Yeah. Um, whoops! There's my alarm to get on a Zoom with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry all right. about that. Uh, yeah, it just it feels really good. Uh, the, there's uh, a really good buzz about the record, and mm-hmm. it seems like everyone is reacting really well and uh, to the singles, the three singles. So right. all the hard work seems to be paying off, you know. Right. And, I, and I just can't wait to be finally out there. So the new one's Time Bomb, and I think you just got you just newly released. Uh, yeah, tell me about that one because it seems like that's a good one that would go over very well live. Yeah, it. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's one of those songs that just kind of happened really quickly. You know, mm-hmm. I, I was watching that Beatles documentary, that that one that was like uh, three three episodes, six hours. I, I forget the. The, how many episodes it was like six seven and i got through the second one and i was so inspired just to write and so i just i shut it off and ran up into the studio and time bomb just kind of came out you know it was one of those things those moments that come along for me not all that often and just i just started playing i started a drum loop and got a friend over to uh to demo the vocals this is going back I, I forget when it was i guess in 2020 and oh wow. yeah and it just came out and i brought it to the guys i'm like you guys like this song and everyone was like hell yeah oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah it's amazing so so the inspiration for that tune was the beatles well they inspired me to be creative okay um, the actual subject matter was just kind of where where i think a lot of a lot of our heads were at at the time just dealing with what we were dealing with you know being right. being uh just life just changing so drastically everyone was kind of on edge so that that's where the subject matter came from and you said i think you said this tune goes back to how far back does it go i think this was in 2020 some okay. of the, some of the songs on the record go back further than that though wow so how much how how much refinement did some of these songs go through like you know you're talking about time bomb that's been ex- in existence for a couple of years at least yeah um well, yeah, that, that was either 20 or 21. I forget. Okay. But uh, yeah, some of them, it just, you know, uh, like Gangs All Here had mm-hmm. minor changes to it. And that yeah. one, we, Snake and I wrote that with our friend Paul Taylor. Um, I think the first time we sat down to write it was in late 2017. Wow. So it's been around a while, okay. you know, and wow. it, it, some of these riffs like October song, there's a song called October song. And that that's that's from a riff that Snake has been playing for ages, just almost like an exercise type of thing, you know. So, yeah, it, it comes from all different spots. So I know I mean, obviously, there's been a, a change as far as frontman. I mean, I know I, I was one of those guys that I was like, oh, no, here we go again. Um, <laughs> you know, simply because I'd gotten used to having Z, uh, you know, ZP in the band and you get used to, you know, the voice, even though he's not, you know, he's he's got his own identity and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but at what point did you did you guys uh, know that it was time to make a change and how did you approach it? Um, well, it uh before before we went on tour there there were certain things you know you, sometimes it happens man you just and it's not because of one person's wrong and one person's right but you just start going in different directions you know what i mean and it happens to marriages it happens to bands and that's what seemed to happen with us um and we were during the recording we just uh we just thought that it would be time for a change where we were going to go. We didn't know. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, you know, without getting into every detail, it's just one of those things that, that kind of happened and it's never an easy decision to make by any means. You're, you're you're with this uh, person and you work with this person for better part of five years. And all of a sudden it's like, all right, man, this is going to be tough. But yeah, we, uh, Eric was uh, on the top of our list. And here we are. 
Boy, talk about well, fitting in perfect. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, again, you know, when you hear that there's a change, you know, you're first of all, you're like, oh, I don't know if I want this. Right. Yeah. But, you know, obviously band moves forward. Um, tell me about how you guys found out about Eric. Well, um, the first time I ever heard his, I had heard of Heat. He was in the band Heat mm-hmm. in uh, Sweden and I heard of them, but I n- never actually heard them. and the first time I actually heard him was they sent the um, for, for the tour that they were on with us, they sent the uh, the video spot for approval. Okay. And I heard his voice. I was like, wow, this dude has some serious pipes. And like, he just looked really cool in the video. And he was like, I'm like, he just has that factor to him, you know? And I was like, cool, this is going to be a great tour. This is, I think both bands are going to compliment each other. And, you know, then we heard him from the dressing room and I'm like, wow, listen to this guy and watched him a couple of times on stage and thought in the back of my mind, maybe when Skid Row has some downtime, I'll give him a shout, maybe mm-hmm. side project, you know, who knows? Right. Um, and then we never like we I think we said hello kind of in the hallway, you know, they right, were leaving right. and we were getting ready to go on stage. So we never really exchanged numbers and then it came around to uh like beginning of this year pretty much and mm-hmm. and we were like um you know we made the change and i said Look, we got to call this guy and at that point he had been putting up videos on his youtube channel of him singing a bunch of different songs made in uh ccr uh, all, uh rainbow and he did 18 in life mm-hmm. and I listened to it and I was like, I, I sent it to the guys and I was like, wow, listen to this dude. And they were freaking out. And so I gave it to our producer, Nick, cause we were in the midst of making this record. And Nick was like, he's the guy, dude. If anyone's going to be able to just crush these songs, it's this guy. So I just threw Instagram and, and I never, like I never try to get in touch with people through Instagram because it's like, okay, if I don't have your number, you don't want me to have your number, right. but this is a different situation. Right. So uh, I just hit him up, not expecting a reply for a while. And he hit me right back. He's, he's like, Hey man, what's up? And blah, blah, blah. So I was like, Hey, you want to jump on a zoom? I got a couple things I want to talk to you about. So we got on a zoom and it, it was originally just to, uh, we were looking at it as to, to make up some dates we were going to lose. Mm -hmm. And because of his recent, uh, uh, he had a bone marrow transplant. And because of that, he was only at like the six month point. His doctor suggested him not getting on a plane yet, not doing all that. So we're like, okay, cool, whatever. That's fine. Um, and then while all that was happening, uh, Nick, our producer was like, man, why don't you send him some, uh, new new couple of new tunes mm-hmm. with a guide vocal on and put a guide vocal on and send it over to him and see uh see what he comes up with and within 24 hours he sent something back and we were like <laughs> we, were, we were so blown away we we're just like is this real <laughs> you wow. know what i mean and and so it was that really at that point we we're like okay let's ask him if he wants to be in the band and we asked him and thankfully he said yeah and wow. it's just been it's been a freight train from that point on because he recorded the album remotely Mm -hmm. um except for two songs and our only interaction with him and the band uh was zoom and oh wow yeah so we didn't meet him in person until Mm -hmm. we our first show we were starting a residency with the scorpions in vegas and our first show was a saturday and we didn't meet him in person until the tuesday before and we rehearsed uh, Wednesday and Thursday, took Friday off, and then just wow. jumped into the deep end head first, man. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. man. Wow. So out of curiosity, I know you mentioned a couple of things, a two-part question. Uh, what was the first song he cut with you guys, like cut the vocals? And two, what were the two songs that you guys, I guess, cut with him in person? Uh, I, the first one, I believe... Um, I, man, it was one of two. We sent them Gangs All Here and a song called Resurrected. So it was one of the two of those. I believe it was Gangs All Here. 
was the first one. And it was, yeah, it definitely was. And then he yeah. said it was great because we sent them that. And he, he uh, immediately texted me. He's like, this is why I fell in love with Skid Row as a teen. Yeah. It's stuff like this. And he, uh, you know, he, he just really crushed it and sent it back. And then a song called resurrected was the second one. Okay. And, and uh, then he did them for real. Like we all listened to it. We're like, okay, cool. But there were really, there wasn't many changes to do, you know, okay. because he, j- it seemed like we wrote, wrote the song with him in mind. Okay. And uh, it was pretty cool. So then the two songs he did in Vegas that he had sung there, um, nowhere fast and world on fire are the ones, those were the only two he didn't get to before he had to travel over here, but we had, we had a decent amount of time off out there. We only did like three shows a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to ask how much, how many, uh, it was he allowed to take any liberties with stuff in the songs as he was cutting them. I mean, it, it, I mean, I've heard the record and it sounds like he's, he's kind of put his own stamp on stuff. Absolutely. He, he, he had asked, he goes, how far should we're like, do you, man, just do what you do. Mm-hmm. If we hear something that doesn't seem to to fit the vision that we had, we'll let you know. And he, he, uh, he was great. He, before he even really started recording it for real, he said, listen, you can't hurt my feelings. If you don't like something, I'd rather have the truth than you guys not being completely satisfied with what your vision was. And I thought that was really cool from the standpoint of just, uh, you know, a guy as good as he is and as experienced as he is. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff, you know, and from another standpoint of just wanting the greater good for the song, that, that's, I thought that was like the coolest thing. Uh, in, and right in the beginning, Mm-hmm. And he's a funny guy. He has, <laughs> he has the same stupid sense of humor we all do. It was pretty seamless. Like the whole transition was pretty seamless because mm-hmm. he's just a knucklehead like we are. Right. So how, how many new tunes do you, have you guys have in the rotation for live shows at this point in time? Well, it'll be three now, <laughs> you know, because nice. um, we, we've been doing Tear It Down and Gangs All Here mm-hmm. and they've been going over fantastic. So um We'll put tear it down and you know sometimes uh, there'll be shorter shows uh this year some are short so we just gotta kind of mm-hmm. get creative you know there there's some songs that we cannot leave the building without playing from our oh, catalog yeah. and right. so we want to make sure those are in there but we also want to make sure people are getting a good dose of, of what this album is all about right right and i was going to ask you i mean uh you know obviously you guys have a uh a, a uh lengthy career as far as recording and also touring and stuff like that um for yourself what's a what's a deeper cut that's fun to perform uh mud kicker i really like playing mud kicker um sweet little sister is another one uh that that's really fun and for i mean a lot of people don't consider quicksand jesus a deep cut but Mm -hmm um it's not a song that's always been in the set and i i love playing that song i just the uh, the whole feel of everything and that's one that eric is like can we put quick saying jesus in the set mm. put let's put it right. in a set let's put it in a set let's put it in a set wow so yeah we'll uh we'll mess around and pull some songs out and put some songs in i mean you guys could almost do a medley of all the ballads <laughs> yeah <laughs> could you imagine right i mean that, that would be awesome uh what about what about a classic that still you know does it for you and gets you pumped up uh well of course youth gone wild is mm-hmm. one won't you know that that song just just brings out the beast and everybody you know um peace of me though i think is a really really fun song and watching eric sing it um it, it's just different it's the not the way he sings it it just it's just a different vibe on stage and the way he approaches the song like there's never really been a, a a call and response with the crowd, but but he has made it that way. I am so sorry, but he has ma- he has made it that way, um, and it's really cool. And now, like I always get excited when that song is coming up, but now it's just like wow, this is this this is taking it up another level. Right, and I know I saw you guys with uh, Pantera supporting you guys, you know, back 
I, I want to say back in the day, but I think that ages us both, but great time. <laughs> um, but do you have a, a fond memory of uh, touring with those guys and having them support you? Because they went on to do their own thing. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so many great memories. And, you know, uh, I, I think about it and I think about all the great memories. And unfortunately, I, it just it makes me sad that Vinny and Dime aren't aren't around anymore. Right. Uh, Dime, <laughs> he was like the most creative person I've ever met in my life, whether it was a video camera or a four track. I had a little four track studio that I carried in a case and when we would stay at the same hotel, I always guarantee to get a knock on the door, dime bag. Hey man, hey man, throw me down some drum loops, throw me down some drum loops and all this. And I throw it on his, his four track cassette. He had the same one. He'd take it back to his room and he put guitar riffs over it. And then I'd ride their bus and we'd set up in the back lounge and he's like, just throw, throw some bass lines on it. And I was just like, this is so cool. I'm mm -hmm. like, do you like this? He goes, who cares? Just put it down, dude. You know, and all this stuff. But just as a whole, those guys were so much fun to be around because they're just really funny. And, you know, we were all from the Northeast mm -hmm. and they were from the Deep South. Right. You couldn't get two different, you know, two different ways of thinking to <laughs> the accents right. and just just like just slang and all that stuff. And it was just a cut up. Like every day was a cut up. We always yeah. bust each other's chops. But to watch those guys on stage man, it made you put on a suit of armor because you're like, all right, I'm going out and I'm right. bringing my my A game to this show because they were just so good. They were just yeah. ridiculously good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I saw it and then I, I agree, you know, it definitely everybody dialed things up. Yeah, without a doubt. So as far as that goes, I mean, if given a chance, would you see this Pantera tribute that's going to happen at some point, I guess, next year? I mean, how do you feel about that? And would you catch it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll see it as many times as I can. I think, um, you know, I see a lot of naysayers mm -hmm. uh, that, but here's the thing. Um, first of all, Dime and Charlie were best friends. Mm -hmm. um, at Dime's funeral, Charlie gave a eulogy that was so incredible it's giving me chills just thinking about it. And those guys were super tight. Zach and Dime and, and the rest of the guys were super tight. There's no two people. Those two people were like extended family to Pantera and Pantera to them. I think it's, it's really great that they're doing this and keeping Pantera music alive, keeping, you know, Dime and Vinny spirit alive. And it's not like they're doing it without the okay of the, the Abbott estate and, and, and everything like that. And Rita. So I think, I think it's a great thing. And, and, you know, I'm just so happy for Phil and Rex that we're, I'm buds with all these guys, but you know, right. Phil and Phil and Rex, and I've known Zach for such a long time, but I'm really happy for everyone involved, especially Phil and Rex. They're getting, they're going and playing those songs that, mm -hmm. I mean, how many years has it been since they played right. them? Right. Especially Phil and, and uh, Rex together, you know, right. it's, it's going to be, it's going to be friggin' amazing. And I, I'm right. really looking forward to seeing it. Right. Uh, one of the things that that I'm aware of, I think you, you did a little bit of some stock car racing at some point in your probably a fan of the sport, I would imagine, if you're doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me what interests you about that, because that's uh, that's uh, definitely one of those uh, fast-paced type of things that, uh, you know, some of these musicians get into. Yeah, I uh, man, I haven't done It's so funny, because I was just talking to my friend uh, the other day, and he reminded me how long ago, how long it's been since I've been in a car. Right. And I'm like, wow, that time flies. But uh, yeah, I love it. It's it just... It was always something I, I really liked when I was a little kid and my uh, big brother turned me on to drag racing and the stock car racing. We had a little little bull ring track in New Jersey called Wall Stadium that he used to take me to. My parents used to take me to. And I always had a fascination for it, but really never got the chance to do it. And then when we were out with Kiss, my friend uh, Ralph Shaheen, who is an announcer, sport, he was a racing announcer, is a racing announcer. He said, hey, man. He goes, there's a celebrity race in, uh, it was in Nashville. And he goes, it's the Mark Colley um, Diabetes Foundation 
race. Are you interested? And I was like, yes. I just said, yes. I didn't know what kind of cars they were racing. It could have been, you know, lawnmowers for all I knew. I was just like, yeah, I'm in. So it was a, um, a series called legends cars. And I, I went and I did it and I placed second in my first race. And it was just, it was awesome. And then from that point I was bit, you know what I mean? Wow. So I got, I got my own car and I, I raced a lot in North Carolina and a lot outside of Atlanta. And, uh, yeah, I, I did that for a while and raced go-karts for a while. And, oh, wow. and, uh, I, I, I just, I don't know what it is about it, but it's the adrenaline factor and the focus factor, you know, you have to really focus and just, I'm, I, I like competing and stuff. So right. it, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. And and uh, I go to like, you know, the high performance go-kart tracks on the road every time I usually take my helmet in the oh. bus. So, uh, so I, I have something I don't have to put on somebody else's helmet. <laughs> so who's your all-time favorite driver? Dale Earnhardt. Ah, yeah. Okay. Dale Earnhardt. Um, you know, as far as NASCAR goes, uh, you know, it's, man, uh, Michael Andretti was, was one of my favorites in Indy, Scott Dixon, Indy. Um, yeah, so many Man. Tony Stewart. I love Tony Stewart. He's great. So, so I don't know if you keep up on current, current, uh, uh, drivers at the moment, but if Skid Row could sponsor a car, who would that be? Either Kyle Larson or Kevin Harvick. That, that would be my choice, you know, wow. and, and just from a business standpoint, mm -hmm. I would go with Kyle Busch once he goes to Richard Childress because all eyes are going to be on that car. <laughs> nice. Well, there you go. That, that would get the word out more, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, man, I, I just got a couple more and then I'll cut you loose and thank you for right. your time. Um, well, I want to put in a request. I said this to Snake when I spoke with him like a month, a little over a month ago, but uh, can we uh, add uh, Can't Stand the Heartache to the set? I'd like to see Eric sing that one. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Um, there's another deep track for you, you know, so it uh, yeah, that was always a fun song to play back in the day. Right. And uh, yeah, Eric has brought that song up more than once for sure. Oh, hope, hopefully we see that. Uh, last thing, you guys have a show coming up in Ridgefield, not uh, a week from this Friday. What can what can folks expect at that? Well, everything that, that, you know, all the songs you want to hear, uh, we're going to play some new ones and, you know, it's just going to be a full on pedal to the floor, rock and roll show. Yeah. Last one. I, I guess I lied. I have one more that just came to mind, but <laughs> what do you prefer? Do you prefer theaters, festivals or these casino shows? Because I imagine they all have their own uh, pros and cons. Um, I give them all to me. I love them all. As, as long as I'm on stage. I'm happy, no. you know, um, some of the casino gigs are, are, uh, are theaters and they're large theaters, mm -hmm. you know, and the thing I love so much about casino gigs is you can walk back to your room. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. You walk through a lot of corridors that right. only, uh, you know, there might be a dumpster here and there, but you get to your room eventually. Right. <laughs> hey man, thank you for your time. Best with the record. I know it's going to be a smash. Uh, we'll Thanks, get the links up. It. We'll get everybody, the PR, everybody, a link to the video and all the social media contacts. And best to you. And hope to talk again. Awesome. Thank